Well, the Bruins play their most complete performance of the year. UCLA comes away with a pretty dominant victory, only ends up being by seven points. But UCLA beats the Oregon Ducks 70 to 63. Four wins in a row, 21 and four. And we're ready to react to this bad boy. Because I'm Zach Anderson, Yock Cyber. Thanks for tuning into this reaction edition of Locked On UCLA, brought to you by Fan Duel Sportsbook. If you're watching on YouTube, look at our boy Joe Bruin. If you're listening, you only have to hear about him. In the meantime, UCLA fans, let's Get down to business. In an interesting road trip and in a weird three weeks where the Bruins have a lot of pretty much cupcakes, as one would put on paper, except this road game at Oregon. UCLA came away with the sweep of the Oregon schools this year, 5-0, oh, or 3-0, oh, I should say, two against Oregon and one against Oregon State. The Bruins have won four in a row and now are 7-2 and two in true road games. And what stuck out about this game for the Bruins? I've been teasing that this was a tough game. Oregon had guys that did not play in the first game between these two guys, like a Kuznard. You had a Biddle. You had guys who could make impacts in a game that UCLA did not see the first time around. And just like the first game, Oregon came out, swung first. The Bruins withstood the early run. Oregon led at the half. And for the second game in a row, UCLA outscored the Ducks by double figures and would have won this game by 10 plus if it wasn't for a late 9 0 run by the Oregon Ducks. So, for the Bruins, what did they do correctly? Well, Will Richardson, Oregon's leading scorer, who could do pretty much anything he wants at times, only five points, two of eight shooting, and three turnovers. They kept Nafali Dante in check, 13 points, nine rebounds. It only took, what, one late field goal before he actually made something happen in the second half. And then while Kuznar got 19, the Ducks shot 35% from three, turned it over 16 times. The Bruins were able to score 19 points off those turnovers and maintain a good chunk of rebounds off the glass. 18 second chance points as the Bruins got their points in the paint despite Bona and Nubo fouling out. The Bruins were able to get their points in the paint, force turnovers, get in transition, and get that deflection bone, get a new signature on there and get the Bruins ready and cooking. Who looked important? Well, Jalen Clark did a little bit more of the same. 13 points, 4 of 10 shooting, 3 rebounds, 4 steals, as he's seeming well on his way to potentially breaking the single-season steals record for UCLA if the Bruins can get him that far. Clark, active defensively, especially late when the game came down to closing time. Clark was spectacular. Bona, interesting. He fouled out with Nuba fouling out before. So despite some post presence consistently and even going all the way down to Mac Etienne, you did see the Bruins control Dante for the majority of this one. And what was the scariest moment of the game? Amari Bailey, who put in eight points in 27 minutes when he twisted that right ankle in the first half. We all thought, oh no, not again. That same foot that was bothering him for almost a month in Pac-12 play right as he was blossoming. This was his first game. He didn't score double figures since he's returned from injury. So it's nice to see him have a good night, get back out there to start the second half. But the Bruins are able to close the door, get him some rest without him needing to be a big impact in that second half. So we hope he is okay going forward. Campbell, a second straight game without a perfect offensive performance. But for Campbell, 415 shooting, nine points, floor general, four assists, but no turnovers, which has been key, making sure the Bruins don't turn it over and play well offensively. Hawk is 25 and 12, another outstanding double double. And you can say Singleton hitting some clutch threes, including that one that put that put the Bruins up in the second half. Two of two from downtown. And just that veteran presence the Bruins needed because they hit 55% from three, able to shoot 42% from the floor. And a little shaky from the free throw line, but the turnovers, the second chance points, bullying their way in a game. When, yes, Oregon, you can look at these numbers at the end, hit some shots, but the Bruins are going to win this game by 15. You can listen to Bill Walton at the end. Yes, you know. The eventual final score doesn't really matter after what told you the Bruins were dominating this game by 18 before a late Oregon run. In my mind, the most complete performance, considering USC couldn't even beat Oregon State, Arizona couldn't even beat Stanford, and the Bruins go on the road, and they flat out dominate an Oregon team who was on the edge of the bubble with the win over the Bruins, would have been in, and UCLA walks away with the victory. In dominant fashion, in their toughest road game yet, Potentially, Utah and Colorado might have more to say about that moving forward. But in what some might say, movement day, moving day, some might say upset day, the Bruins walk away victorious, a two-game lead in the Pac-12, with Tennessee's loss again, with Arizona's loss. Depending how the voters decide to shift things, the Bruins could be in the top five on the edge 
of the top four by the time the next rankings are out. So it's nice to see the Bruins maybe cruising up to a one seed in the West, considering that's where Arizona was currently slotted in bracketology. So nice to see the Bruins slowly kicking things in gear after the end of January, really kick them in the butt, find a true road hostile environment, and thrive in it in pretty much every facet of the game, offensively, defensively, even when things weren't going their way. The Bruins found a way, kept it close, in a game that they probably should not have been down by three at the end of the first half. They kept it within a possession, made their first couple of buckets, kept Oregon on the back of their heels, and the Bruins broke, and Oregon could not come back. The Bruins did what they needed to do and got that win. And moving forward, while Cal did take Arizona State to overtime, and Stanford did just beat Arizona and put up almost 90 points on them, or even more, I didn't even see the final score, but that next week might be tougher than we thought. But it still should not provide the test that Oregon tried to provide tonight. You don't want to overlook every opponent, even though I try to make it as easy as it sounds. But the Bruins, the Bruins walk away with the key, crucial road victory Every facet, I think they played well. They shot the ball well, especially on the road, played defense. You can just go on and on. A nice week, and we'll talk about it more in depth throughout the rest of the week. And, hey, Bill McGovern, is he out? Yes, I haven't been around the last couple this last week consistently. But, hey, you know, the sniffles, the cough, they're gone. We'll talk about Bill McGovern and company with the UCLA defensive football changes on Monday. We'll get to who can be good, who's going to come, who's going to leave, what's looking like speculatory. We'll talk about all that when we return with Locked On UCLA. But no, the Bruins on the men's basketball side, 21-4, and four, get the job done, and maybe play their most, no, not maybe, they do play their most complete performance of the season. This episode is brought to you by Fan Duel Sportsbook, the new sportsbook partner, of Locked On. They are the number one sports book in America. You can get your no sweat first bet with the the big game coming up, Super Bowl 57. $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. All you have to do is go to fanduel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. And then, hey, you know, it's 2023. You're trying to make some new hires, get some new employees, or maybe find that energy you had at the end of 22 and push it into 2023. To get those qualified candidates that can get those more efficiently, match open roles with people who have the skills, you can use and check out LinkedIn Jobs that helps you hire those qualified candidates more efficiently and screen and app- rate applicants on all qualifications and what platform. Small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find those qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And then also one final thing. I promise one final thing. Built Bar. Go to Built Bar. Order yourself some Built Bars. They've got churro, peanut butter brownie. Coconut almond, 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein. you got to try a Bilt Bar. Order one today. You will not regret it. Just like the Bruins are making you not regret sweating it out on a late Saturday night. You didn't sweat it out. You enjoyed it, and the Bruins kicked some butt and got us excited moving forward for the next week. Arizona is coming down in the next couple of weeks, but it looks like the Bruins are slowly getting their paws on wrapping on a regular season Pac-12 Conference Championship and then wrapping up the one seed in the Pac-12 Tournament and potentially one seed in the NCAA tournament. But that still comes with wins and continual dominant performances for the Bruins moving forward. Hopefully Bailey's healthy. We'll see what the defensive coordinator switch may or may not look like if it does or does not happen. We'll talk about that all and more. Meantime, a clap time, baby. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, uh, like, you see, uh, like, fight, fight, fight. Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer signing off. This has been. Locked on UCLA. Go Bruins.